talking about vintage NYSE with Dave Kaplan. Next on Eternal Dirtles. Hey, I just want to give a quick shout out to all of our Patreon supporters out there. Thank you to the Dirtle Maniacs. If you want to be a Dirtle Maniac, go to patreon.com slash eternal dirtles and help support the channel. It keeps things going. It keeps things updated. Thanks so much for watching. On with the show. Hello and welcome to Eternal Dirtles. I'm your host, Zach Clark. And with me this week, because Phil's out for a month and a half, uh, Dave Kaplan. Dave, how are you, man? I'm good. Thanks for having me, Zach. How are you? Heck yeah. Uh, no, I'm, I'm great. Uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm super excited to talk about vintage. We don't, we, you know, we have you on every couple of months to like kind of keep everybody posted about what's going on in vintage. And uh, now's a great time because uh, the uh, NYSC like uh, championship events are happening. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I'm definitely excited. Um, we're in May now. That means next month is NYSC um, coming up uh, for anyone who isn't familiar NYSE is a vintage event that's been run by Nick Detweiler. Uh, he's probably done a dozen of them or so over the last 10, 15 years. Um, took a bit of a break uh, during COVID in paper, but very happy to have it return coming up uh, next month in June. And the the big uh, the big takeaway is that if you top eight, you get a piece of power. Um, everyone in the top eight gets a mox, an ancestral, a time walk. And the winner gets their very own Black Lotus. Uh, so quite a competitive event that's coming up. Yeah, it's an amazing opportunity to to pick up some power if if uh, if that's something you you know as a Magic player you're looking for. Who knows? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but yeah, so uh, I think I think one of the big takeaways uh, also for this tournament, aside from getting power, is that it's not it's not particularly cheap to join. But there are ways to uh, there are ways to qualify to get to get reduced entry, right? It's a big ticket entry. It's five hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, Nick is great to the community in that he does not run this to make a profit. Um, he takes all of the tournament entries and uses them to get the venue, to buy the prizes, to pay the judge staff. Um, he even gets some vendors there to deal cards. Um, but power has gotten so expensive yeah. that a five hundred dollar entry is required just to break even. Um, However, um, you can win an entry uh, into the event. Yeah. Um, over the next month and a half, there's probably four more events in the New York City area uh, where if you win, uh, you get a $500 ticket into NYSE and you get a free win. Your first round is a buy. Oh, a buy. Oh, that's amazing. So a buy to any <laughs> event like your local you know, $25 tournament is a nice thing to have. But a buy when you're got a lotus on the line is is a pretty good thing. Yeah, that means a lot for sure. Um, yeah. So you know, one of the things I like to you know, I want to square people's uh, uh, expectations going into an event like this. You know, it five hundred dollar entry is the first thing people look at. They're like, oh my god, you know. And of course, you can win a mox. But if you really think about it, you know, when we go out for like you know, let's say you know a magic con or whatnot, you know, hotel, the whole deal, whatever. Um, all that stuff ends up to you know running you about to about that amount of money but you know you're not always in control of the of the great community that you get to that you get to hang out with i will say this the vintage community is one of the all-time best communities second probably to the legacy community of course uh in, in magic the gathering i i really like i, I a lot, i've made a lot of really great friends in the vintage community absolutely um a lot of the people in the vintage community have been playing since the early 90s. Uh, there are definitely some folks who come over from Legacy who have only been playing vintage for a little bit. Yeah. And then they find out that almost every vintage event allows you to proxy the first 15 cards. That's a big point, so yeah. If you have, oh yeah, if you have a Legacy deck, you probably have a vintage deck without even realizing it. Yeah. So that makes it a lot more interesting for someone who's never played vintage before. Because uh, so many times someone will say, oh, what formats do you play? I'm like, well, I play Legacy and Vintage and Pre-Modern. They're like, oh, I play Legacy, but oh, I'm never going to get any power. It's too expensive. I'm like, oh, you play uh, Delver and Legacy? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, so you have Wastelands and Forest of Wells? They're like, yeah. I'm like, all right, you probably have a vintage deck if you can proxy all the power yeah like, oh wow i didn't realize that i did relatively well i mean this is 
five years ago now when the uh, it was right after NYSC they had an event uh, in in Upper New York called the Mana Drain, and I just took my rug Delver deck and took out my Delvers and put in Collector Ulfs and played with Renin Six, which had recently gotten banned in in Legacy, and I just strip mine Collector Ulf my way to top eight. So it, it's it's definitely a, a format where you know with a couple of with a couple of proxies you can do well. Absolutely. And one of the things that's interesting to me about Vintage is the cards are so extremely powerful. There's not a ton of room to have 20 different tier one archetypes like you might find in a format like Legacy or Modern. So it actually introduces some opportunity uh, to really be an innovator because you can kind of have a pretty good idea of what to expect at any event. Um, I saw somebody just yesterday posted a list for Blood Moon, for Magus the Moon, for Null Rod, for Stony Silence, and then a bunch of like three and four drop creatures. And I looked at it, I'm like, that can't really be a deck, right? Like, but if you land a Blood Moon against a lot of deck on turn one, the game is just over. Yeah. Same thing with a null rod. Followed up with a null rod. You get you get <laughs> you know, a null rod, a stony silence, a collector roof in play. A lot of decks just fold. Yeah. I mean, that was you know, that was my story for that uh for the mana drain. I played in the NYSE event. I did okay, but I realized that every time I got a collector wolf into play, I won those games. So I went from two to four, and I just streamlined my deck into like a you know, like a rug delver, like fun police style deck. And I think my my big like you know uh, innovation was instead of playing Jace, which you know everyone's playing, you know Red Blast or Pyroblast, I played Chandra Torch of Defiance, uh, and everyone at the time was playing uh, Narset uh, Parter of Veils. Uh, so sh instead of drawing cards, I was just flipping over the top card and playing it. And most of my deck was action. You know, I had Force of Wills. Uh, you know, a couple a couple of other cards in there that were that were reactionary. But most of my deck was action. So just slamming you know uh whatever whatever the extra card was every turn and people could not remove chandra torture defiance from the board you know uh a question i always love to ask people and i know you know the answer dave is do you know what the best card to retrace with red and six is i think i know is it time walk it's time walk <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see that's how you know one. you're a vintage player a vintage player gets it uh, a legacy player will uh, will immediately go, oh, it's, it's Ancestral Recall. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then That's I'm like, Time Walk's pretty good. 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 Casting Time Walk and getting all the turns, pretty great. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. It's, uh, the new vault key. Yeah. Eternal Dirtles is sponsored by Tales of Adventure. You can go to toamagic.com, use the code Dirtles for 5% off your order, and you're going to get that whole order in one package. No more waiting for 5 or 6 or 12 Packages to show up at your door so that you can finish your deck. ToAMagic.com, code Dirtles for 5% off, and you'll be directly supporting the show. So, uh, you know, what are the decks right now that we're seeing in Vintage? Because I think this this will help people kind of get an idea of what the metagame looks like. Yeah. So, right now, and I took a quick look at what the metagame is like today compared to at the beginning of the year yeah and you still have your same pillars of the format right uh you have your bizarre strategies you have your workshop decks you have your oath of druids decks you have your blue x control decks you have your aggressive decks which are almost exclusively mono white initiative at this point yeah and then you have two different types of combo decks. Um, you've got your more traditional kill you this turn type of combo deck, like a Doomsday or a yeah. Brain Freeze on the World Breach, kill you on the spot, or what's become extremely popular, uh, which is um, Coveted Jewel, PO. Oh, yeah. Draw an entire deck, probably get into a Vault Key Lock or kill you with Urza Saga tokens. We just had a uh, Preslov uh, builder burn from from uh, uh, Moto on to talk about the the legacy version of that deck. I assume the vintage version, yeah, the vintage version is playing Vault Key, so that's pretty good. Yeah, Vault Key is just so 
it's so powerful. Um, any deck can play it. And then if you're playing Urza Saga to fetch up the key, it just gets even better. And you have so, access to Tinker. Tinker finds it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's very, very good. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So th those are kind of the six different archetypes I would frame the metagame with. Well, let's talk about the the bizarre decks a little bit because I know bizarre has changed from like a dredge deck to something that's a little a, a little uh, a little more aggressive. Yeah, so bizarre strategies over the last couple of years have definitely seen a shift. Um, I remember when I started playing vintage uh, a number of years ago, it was all about dread returning in like a flame can zell it and killing your opponent on the spot. And then it became a little more slow, but consistent by getting your deck full of permission. You had all these blue cards like Prized Amalgam. Uh, you get your Force of Will, your Force Negations, and now you actually have tons of zero mana interaction um, at the expense of being slower, but much more consistent. Um, and then we started to see mana plus bizarre in these bizarre aggro strategies where you weren't bizarring to try and win the game. It would just fuel you, maybe get you some Venge Vines, give you some fuel for Hollow Ones, yeah. you play a bunch of Root Wallace to trigger your Venge Vines. Um, and then you could even play Deathrite Shamans. You could play Mana to put a Collector Roof into play. Um, those have actually been on the downswing. Okay. Um, most of the graveyard decks more recently have gone back to your traditional dredge. Yeah. So okay. the mana bizarre decks aren't as popular now as they were at the beginning of the year. All right. And I'll make sure to get some deck lists from you and we'll post those in the links below as well. Um, so what about shops? What's shops doing now get days? Uh, is it, is it, is it just, you know, 50, 56 cards and four shops still? Shops has got to be at an all-time low. Um, it's at 5% of the oh, meta. Wow. Um, it's traditionally been somewhere between 10 and 20. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty low right now. Uh, I think just being exposed to Force of Vigor, having no turn zero, no Force of Will, no Force of Negation, you know, protection if you're on the draw and then a lot of decks play so much mana that a sphere of resistance in play is not that big a deal it's not, it's not game over it, yeah. um you only have one chalice you don't have four you only have one trinisphere you don't have four um you lodestone golem, lodestone golem yeah. Golem, you don't have four so it's not like the shop stacks of the past Golos has become pretty much the go-to for shops okay but even then um, it's just not enough. Uh, the format has gotten just so objectively powerful that shops really is not putting up a lot of results. Okay. Um, what about uh, the the oath deck? So uh, I, I know Atraxa is, is probably got to be the thing you're trying to oath nowadays, right? Yeah, the oath decks have exclusively become show and tell slash oath and Atraxa into play. Um, no more Grizzle Brands, no more Emrakuls, uh, no more Niv Mizzet. Uh, it's just 100% get your tracks into play, get some Force Wills in your hand. Um, yeah, that's it. So, are, are, how are Orcish Bowmasters in, in the format right now? Are, is the format lousy with them like it is in, it, is in Legacy? And I, I don't say that thinking that they should necessarily be banned in Legacy, but like every deck that can play Bowmasters plays Bowmasters. That's the biggest shift. Uh, at the end of last year, we were seeing 14% of the metagame being blue, white, blue, black, blue, black, white, blue X control decks. Um, and when black is involved, you typically see four Orcish Bowmasters. Um, it has doubled its presence in the metagame to 30% of decks are blue X control. All the black ones play Orcish Bowmasters. 
It's funny because, you know, when I think of when I think of vintage, I think of like instantaneous wins a lot of times, like, you know, not necessarily like turn one wins, but like the game is now over because, you know, I have assembled this combo. It, and, you know, that was where Delver at the time was sort of a, uh, a an anomaly because like Lightning Bolt, not really where you want to be in, in vintage. Um, so it's it's odd to me that, uh, you know, that punishment of like, you know, a couple of cards drawn does damage makes a token is enough that like it's seeing play in vintage as well. That's a really good point. And that actually kind of touches on a divide in the blue control community. Um, some people play time twister to combo with your orcish bowmaster. Yeah. Um, if you can flash in the bowmaster on your opponent's end step and then time twister, uh, you know, on your turn, now you have access to what is it? 16 damage. It's a lot of damage. Yeah. <laughs> 16 damage. Yeah. Um, so that that's pretty good. Um, but some people feel that they want to play a true, true control deck. Um, if you time twister and you don't win immediately, now your opponent has seven cards. So that's not yeah. great. Uh, but yeah, you can play it as a pure control card just to punish your opponent for drawing extra cards. Or you can try and combo it with Time Twister. Yeah. It's wild to think about like how much the metagame has shifted over, over just the last year. Um and, and how and how Orcish Bowmasters, like like I said, it's, it seems like a card that you would think like doesn't make that big of a big of a change for that format. Whereas like, you know, Narset, things had to be done. You know, not being able to draw cards in the format of Ancestral Recall was tough. Um but uh yeah, so so Tell me a little bit about those the, those like blue control decks. Uh, you know what you know minus like force of will and recall and stuff like that. What else are they playing? So the main component of all these decks is having Luris as your companion, ah. uh, which means you're giving up all of your three drops. Uh, which if you've been playing vintage for a while, thinking about giving up your Narset, your Tinker. Right, because yeah. your tinker is probably getting your bolus of citadel or a sphinx of the steel wind or something that's definitely over three mana. Yep. Um, if you're playing white, you're giving up your monastery mentor. These were like the hallmarks of vintage power. These cards were new, overly powerful, and had to be restricted. Yeah. Um, but it turns out that having Luris as the eighth card in your hand every single game is extremely powerful and consistent and worth building your deck around. And that's what these blue control decks are doing. Um, they'll even play cards like Mishra's Bobble, just because you can recur it. Yeah. Right? Um, Soul Guide Lantern kind of has two purposes. It, it hates graveyard decks, and also it recurs to draw off um, Luris. Also and great in the mirror against it. another Luris deck, right? It, exactly. You get to snipe your opponent's uh, bobbles and other effects. Uh, so whoever gets that going first can definitely have a, a big edge. And Bowmaster. Uh, yeah. Against a deck that's attacking with creatures, you just block with your Bowmaster, it dies, and then you play it again on your turn. Uh, and you can keep doing that. Uh, and Dress Down is another huge one that's yes. seen a big uptick in play. Um, the the, the go-to play is to go to your own end step, you take Dress Down from your graveyard, and you play it instant speed during your own end step, and then for your whole opponent's turn, they can't use any of their creature effects. Oh, and then man. you draw your card, and then you do the same thing next turn, and you can shut off your opponent's Luris and just own the game that way. Oh, man. So there's a lot of Luris versus Luris mirror technology that's being innovated. Like those old Jace mirrors back in the day where you'd play three mana Jace to kill the other Jace when the rules were set up that way. <laughs> um, right, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, so thinking about that, so what what are the what are the like main combo decks that were that, that you see? Is the perfect storm still a deck? Not so much. Um we hadn't really seen any dark ritual decks besides Doomsday for okay. a while. And Doomsday is still decks. using the, the Thoracle combo, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, Doomsday. Um, Doomsday did get four ponders. Ponder was unrestricted, so that was an uptick for Doomsday. Yeah. Um, it sees a maybe a little bit more play than it did, but not not much. Um, Beseech the Mirror uh, got some play, which did bring back your Dark Rituals and your Tendrils of Agony. Uh, that was like the it deck for maybe a month or so. It got a ton of play, but it just kind of fell off. Uh, I think it it just didn't have the consistency as um, something like Coveted Jewel, uh, which is probably the premier go-to combo deck right yeah. now, uh, where you're just drawing 10, 20, 30 cards in your combo turn and then winning. What so what does the um jewel deck win with? Does it just cast Emrakul like the the uh legacy deck does, or does it win like in a different way? Like I, you know, I know that it can do the infinite turn thing, but like what's the kill card? Yeah, uh I haven't seen Emrakul. Um it's really just getting vault key and then just winning with Urza Saga tokens. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Saga's a good card. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's perfect in that deck because you're playing, you know, you've got all the Moxon and everything like that. Like, a uh, turn one uh, Urza Saga in this in this format where you're not probably, I mean, I don't know, are they playing Ancient Tomb? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah? you got okay. your Workshops, your Ancient Tombs, your Urza Sagas. You're just that more much more consistent to be able to turn on your Urza Saga on, like, the second turn that it's in play. Right. It you have the kind of mana base of a workshop deck. Some people actually refer to the deck as a workshop deck. Um, but I think most people associate a workshop deck having spheres resistance, you know, yeah, more of a stack deck, yeah. Void, some type of aggressive creatures. Um this does play metamorph, Rexy Metamorph, oh, yeah. which has a lot of uh very useful uh abilities one it's blue so yeah it's just the forest it always copy your attracts eternal dirtles is proud to be sponsored by moxfield.com moxfield is the best deck building website on the internet you can find all of my and phil's decks in links below including decks from this episode and if you do you'll be directly supporting the channel so frexy metamorph you can copy attracts you can uh if you cast it um i don't think if they show and tell you can show and tell in your metamorph and copy it i think yeah when you i'm pretty sure you're be correct because yeah. uh, an early an early legacy zach clark uh, definitely tried to put clones in his sideboard at one point and that doesn't, <laughs> doesn't work <laughs> yeah uh but yes it, you you can um you can try and copy the the tracks, uh, uh, usually you just copy a, a Coveted Jewel and draw another three cards and then yeah. tap another three mana and you just go semi-infinite um, yeah. with all your mana and card draw. Yeah, the, the, Phyrexia Metamorph just has so many so many levels to it, so many tricks you can pull off, uh, you know, if you're, if, if you uh, expand your mind for a second when you're in a, when you're like in a, in sort of a hook where you're like, oh no, I'm going to lose. And then you're like, oh wait, I can just like, copy this artifact that you have or copy this creature that you have and it like completely changes mm -hmm. the game i've seen people kill other people's orcish bowmasters you know when they yep. need to you know there's it, it's kind of a it's it, it's a neat little catch all that the deck just has it it's um it's really debilitating if like your opponent has their manifold key and then you cast a time vault and you're about to like go off and go infinite next turn and then your opponent just metamorphs your time vault. Yep. And now they have a time vault to pair with your key and they go infinite right before you. Yeah. That's that's tough. That's vintage. <laughs> that is vintage. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think we got a good idea of of all the different decks. And like I said, I, I wanna uh I wanna get get some lists from you and we'll put those into the into the description as well. Um you have an event coming up relatively soon, uh, for as a qualifier for NYSE, right? Yes, uh, on May 18th, Saturday at 11 a.m. Uh, in Long Island City, uh, we have a NYAC qualifier. Uh, we still have a few slots open. It's 32 players, and we've capped out the last few events we've had. Uh, so we're looking to fill up those spots soon. Uh, if you are interested, if you'd like to play, uh, it's $35 entry, all the prizes uh are paid out um 
all the entries are, are put towards prizes and the winner will um, get money towards the $500 entry for NYSC, although you don't have to use it towards NYSC. And uh, yeah, if you're interested in learning more, uh, you can just reach out to me on Twitter. It's David underscore H underscore Kaplan. And let me know if you're interested. And of course, I'll, cl I'll include that link below as well. I'll include all, all of Dave's links uh, below so that you uh, you can reach out to him if you're interested. Um, yeah, it's it'll, it should be a really fun event. I, I'm kind of, I'm on the fence myself about coming because it's been so long since I've got to see everybody. It would just be nice to get out there. But um, yeah, uh, Dave, it's been awesome having you on the show. Uh, and I look forward to, I mean, we're going to have you back for Eternal Weekend, obviously, uh, to, to kind of help everybody break down what they should be playing in the vintage event for Eternal Weekend. Um, but uh, in the meantime, uh, it's been a blast having you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, love to have you at the event. Uh, it is a very unique venue. It's a indoor sand volleyball court yeah. that has space for gaming. Uh, so they've also got a fully stocked bar. So uh, come on, hang out, have a few drinks. Uh, Bring your time. beach shorts, get a, spike a couple of balls. You know, the first event we had there, a ball came over the net and hit someone's picnic table. And we're like, I don't know if this is the best venue for vintage. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but I noticed they had upstairs spacing that was roped off from the courts and now okay. we use that space. So that's oh, not perfect. an issue anymore. That's good. <laughs> yeah. I, I was never uh, a big volleyball. I'm a tall dude, but like are you guys, are you getting, are you getting uh tall Eric in there? Because I feel like if you get tall Eric in there, you can, you can uh, set up a team, right? <laughs> we've always, uh, we've always said that, especially Eric, but whoever makes it to the finals, if you want to go, uh you know play it out on the court two on uh, two yeah <laughs> yeah yeah um but we never know what to do with our vintage decks um, yeah oh <laughs> so, yeah got, but it would, got, it would be like, fun to yeah it's like uh you know like a uh, old school duel where you have like a second where this is just the person that watches your <laughs> watches your vintage deck while you're playing volleyball all against somebody anyhow yeah. uh yeah. <laughs> I, I digress uh dave uh, thanks so much for coming on, uh, and we'll catch you next time. Uh, everybody, thanks for watching. All right, great to be here. Thanks. Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to this channel and do your part to help sustain the legacy content ecosystem. Just subscribing to this channel goes a long way to reminding YouTube that people love and support this format. Now, if you really want to go the extra mile, you should think about supporting us through Patreon. Both the links for subscription and Patreon are right here. And... If you're listening on an audio format, you can go to patreon.com slash eternal Thanks so much for watching.